Let's look at how we can find some information about the equations of lines by looking at their graphs. Here's a graph of a line and we're going to find the intercepts for this line and write an equation for it based on what we see in this figure. So let's start with the intercepts. Remember the intercept is where it crosses the axis. So an x-intercept is where the line crosses an x-axis, and the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Well, from this figure, it looks like we're crossing the x-axis at approximately 1.5. And in a problem like this, we're going to go ahead and assume that we're not being tricked. Uh, that the answer isn't really 1.47 or something that we're just supposed to tell from the picture what it looks like it is and assume that there's enough information for us to make that decision. Similarly, the y-intercept, that's the value where you cross the y-axis, which is down here at negative 3. Okay, now I also want to write an equation for this line. To get an equation for it, we could use, say, the slope-intercept formula, y equals mx plus b. And to use that formula, we need the b, which is the y-intercept. We've already figured that out. And m, which is the slope. So to use this formula to write down an equation for the line, we're also going to have to identify the slope from this picture. And with a figure like this, the easiest way to do that is typically to draw a triangle between two points we can identify on the graph of the line, a right triangle, and then use the rise of that triangle and the run, meaning the change in y and the change in x to come up with the slope. So recall that the slope is the rise divided by the run. And with the triangle I drew here, it looks like the rise is two units with a run of one unit. And so that simplifies to two. And you'd get the same answer if you used a different triangle. For example, if I used this triangle, I'd end up with a rise of four units and a run of two units. So I'd get four over two, but that simplifies to the same value. That simplifies to two. So use whichever triangle seems to make your work the easiest. But it has to be a triangle like this with a horizontal line segment and a vertical line segment for the two sides. And then your line becomes the hypotenuse. Okay, we've got enough information now to write down an equation for this line. Uh, the slope we just found is 2, so y equals 2x, plus the y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative 3. Instead of writing plus negative 3, I'm just going to write minus 3. And here we have an equation for this line. Let's use similar reasoning for another example. Um, the intercepts, where do you cross the axes? Well, it turns out you cross the x-axis at the same place you cross the y-axis because this line goes through the origin. So you cross the x-axis when x is 0. You cross the y-axis when y is 0. Great. Now we know we're going to need the slope as well, so let's draw another triangle. And I'm going to use this one because it looks easy. So what do we have here? Well, we have a run of 4. You go 4 from left to right along that horizontal line segment. And the rise well, it looks like 2, but it's actually negative 2, because if we start at this point, we go to the right 4, but we go down 2. So we're going to treat that rise as a negative. So 
What do we get for the slope? 4 divided by negative 2. That's negative. Uh, sorry, no, I did that backwards. It's rise over run. Negative 2 divided by 4. So that simplifies to negative 1 half. Or you could write it as a decimal if you want, negative 0.5. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Now between the slope and the y-intercept, which we know is the value of b in the equation y equals mx plus b, we can write down an equation for this line y equals mx plus b. Well, I could write plus b here. I could write plus 0, but it doesn't seem necessary to write plus 0. So typically, this is the way we would write the equation. y equals negative 1 half x. Okay, let's do one more, uh, slightly different. This time we're given an equation and we're asked whether this graph corresponds to that equation for a line. Could this graph be for the line 2x plus 4y equals 4? Well, in this case, probably the easiest thing to do to decide if this could be the right graph, is to check whether it has the correct intercepts. So what would the intercepts be for this line, and do they match the actual intercepts we see? Well, first of all, the x-intercept on the graph is 4, x equals 4. The y Oh, sorry, uh, that is the y-intercept. Uh, the x-intercept was 2. The y-intercept is 4. There we go. Okay, now, is that what we need for the line? Well... For the equation, to get an intercept, what you do is figure out where you cross the axis by plugging in a zero for the other variable, right? Because the x-axis here is the same as the line y equals zero. So we can figure out where this line crosses the x-axis by plugging in y equals zero. 2x plus 4 times zero equals 4. So if you solve that, you get 2x equals 4, which tells you x is 2. Oh, well, that's right. That's the value we want for the x-intercept. How about the y-intercept? Uh, now we're going to plug in a 0 for x to figure out the y-intercept. Uh, 2 times 0 is 0, so that plus 4y is just 4y. And then when you solve for y, you get y equals 1. Well, that does not match what we got from the line we see in the figure. So the equation has a y-intercept of y equals 1, but the graph has a y-intercept of y equals 4. Those are not the same. So the answer for this one is no. This figure could not be the graph of the line with this equation.